Hey guys, what's good? Derek here from Bomb Socks with a new day of Bomb Bites where we feast upon the words of Christ and we do it one bite at a time. So I want to finish up section 138 this week with just a couple of cool stories that I think you'll appreciate. So um, remember, first of all, what was taught in section 137 verses 7 and 8. All who have died without a knowledge of the gospel, who would have received it if they would have had a chance, shall receive the celestial kingdom of God. So let me show you some pictures of some members of the church. Here's George Washington. Here's Thomas Jefferson. Here's Benjamin Franklin. This is John Wesley. And this is Christopher Columbus. Okay, now you think of all of them. Yep, absolutely. All of these men, members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So many of you know this story right here. Here's a baptismal record of those names. You're going to see names like Andrew Jackson, William Henry Harrison, John Tyler, James Knox Polk, Zachary Taylor, Millard Fillmore, and Abraham Lincoln right there. So this is baptismal records. Um, this story, you're probably familiar with this picture here. Here's Wilford Woodruff at the St. George Temple, surrounded by all of these individuals. Founding Fathers, Presidents of the United States, all of that. He says, I will here say before closing that two weeks before I left St. George, the spirits of the dead gathered around me, wanting to know why we did not redeem them, said they. You've had the use of the endowment house for a number of years, and yet nothing has ever been done for us. We laid the foundation of the government you now enjoy, and we never apostatized from it. But we remain true to it and were faithful to God. These were the signers of the Declaration of Independence. And they waited on me for two days and two nights. I can only imagine what that was like. So I thought it was very singular that notwithstanding so much work had been done, yet nothing had been done for them. The thought never entered my heart from the fact, I suppose, that heretofore our minds were reaching after our more immediate friends and relatives. I straightway went into the baptismal font and called upon brother J.D.T. McAllister, who, by the way, he has a very, very good looking great, 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 great granddaughter. <laughs> That's my wife. This is my, this is my wife's great, great, great grandpa, John D.T. McAllister, to baptize me for the signers of the Declaration of Independence and 50 other eminent men, making 100 in all, including John Wesley, Columbus, and others. I then baptized him for every president of the United States except three, and when their cause is just, some will do the work for them. And their work has been done. I thought it was interesting, those five individuals I showed you, here they are again. These men were all ordained to be high priests. Usually what happens when you go to the temple, you are ordained to be an elder before you have those initiatories. And these men were all ordained to be high priests, which seems to suggest some kind of leadership. So wouldn't it be cool if you get to the spirit world and there you are in George Washington's ward. He's your stake president. I don't know, that would be interesting to see that. But we do the work for these individuals if they would have received it had they been permitted to be on this earth then they will accept the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, with that in mind, there is a great, great story here. And this really helps me understand why President Nelson's uh, testimony of doing work on both sides of the veil is so crucial and so important. So I love this, so watch this. Well, let me tell you about my grandfather, Nelson. When he was only 27 years old, he saw and conversed with his father who died on January 27th, 1891. So about three months after his death. Now my grandfather kept a journal. I think it's not more than half a dozen pages long, but this is the main entry in the journal. And when father came, he said, well, my son, I had a few spare minutes. I received permission to come and see you for a few minutes. I'm very glad to see you, father. How do you do? I'm feeling well, my son. How are you and mother and the boys getting along? Yeah. I'm well, Father. Can you see us at all times? Do you know what we are doing? No, my son, I cannot. I have something else to do. I have been assigned work that must be performed. What have you been doing since you died, Father? He looked at me and smiled. My son, I received my commission to preach the gospel. I've been traveling together with Apostle Erastus Snow ever since I died. You cannot imagine, my son, how many spirits there are in the spirit world that have not yet received the gospel. But many are receiving it and a great work is being accomplished. Many are anxiously looking forth to their friends who are still living to administer for them in the temples. I've been very busy in preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Father, is the gospel as taught by this church 
true? My son, do you see that picture pointing to a picture of the First Presidency of the Church hanging on the wall? Yes, I see it. Well, just as sure as you see that picture, just as sure is the gospel true. The gospel of Jesus Christ has within it the power of saving every man and woman that will obey it. And in no other way can they ever obtain salvation in the kingdom of God. My son, always cling to the gospel. Be faithful to the covenant you have made with God. My son, be a good boy. Goodbye. Now, my grandfather felt this was very sacred. And he said, I write it for the benefit of my family and friends. How precious it is that he kept that record for me because I never knew him. He died when my father was 17, but he left me this precious record. And now that I'm a general authority of the church, I, I assume everybody in the, in the world is my, part of my family, so I share it. Such a cool story. I, I love that. And I got, love how this ties into section 138 with the work that is done for the dead who are in the spirit world. Well, cool little quote here. Many of you are familiar with this one. This was given to the teenagers, but it certainly applies to everybody. It says, do you young people, and we all are young, right? Want a sure way to eliminate the influence of the adversary in your life? Right, of course. Immerse yourself in searching for your ancestors. Prepare their names for sacred vicarious ordinances available in the temple and then go to the temple to stand as proxy for them to receive the ordinances of baptism and the gift of the Holy Ghost. As you grow older, you will be able to participate in receiving the other ordinances as well. I can think of no greater protection from the influence of the adversary in your life. So you can see how these apostles, whether it's Elder Scott or whether it's President Nelson or whoever it is, has such a testimony of doing work for the dead because they have that opportunity to change and that opportunity to repent and have all of the blessings given to them. So anyway, such cool doctrine this week. I appreciate you watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for sharing these messages. We love that. Go check out our amazing gospel-themed socks at bombsocks.com and you guys have a great week. Godspeed and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.